Madhouse Podcasting Network. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Shoot the Shit. It has been a cool minute since we've done this podcast. Today we have um, Jeremy's back. You know, you saw him on the Milesaur podcast. We had a good time. Talked a lot about uh, his history with the haunt business and his work in the visual effects uh, world. A lot of good stuff. The legend himself, Scott Dieterman, is back, and he hates when I say that. <laughs> he hates when anyone calls him that, so I do it on purpose now to piss him off. Uh, legend is far fetched, man. The, far-fetched. These fucking millennials, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well let's let's uh, not get into the PC stuff, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. How uh, how are you, uh, gentlemen, doing today? All good. Besides sweating bullets, everything's good. Yeah, you man. Know? It, it, it's it's a hot one in California. It really is. Yeah. Always Had a nostalgic there. day with. Uh, the old skate shop I used to ride for when I visited them. It's their twenty fifth anniversary today. Oh, nice. Did they do anything special like discounts or anything or not today? It's gonna be later on. They're gonna do a celebration. Okay. They're gonna have like a full blown like event or something or Yeah. Cool. They're gonna do they're gonna show something they're gonna have a slideshow with old photos and video and stuff like that from oh, back nice. in the day. It'd be cool if they did like a little demo in the front or something, you know, that'd be cool. They probably will. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. They got a ton of skaters for that team. Yeah. Um, so gentlemen, uh, we got a little bit, so the first, the reason why we had Jeremy on the podcast for the first time, obviously we met him through Scott, uh, they've been friends for, for years now. So tell us how that, uh, that, that formed right there. How did that friendship start? Jeremy, you can do that if you want. By accident. Yeah, kind of. (laughs) I was told, I I was told by the man to go and talk to him and, uh, to to Scott and, uh, the, a couple of the other guys, the veterans at at the time back in 97 was that 97 yeah. 97 when i first got on streets and um scott was with uh, all the vets at the hanging and we really didn't like officially quote unquote meet then like we kind of heard him ramble and talk and that's when yeah, i realized I just coached his... him a little bit and then we kind of yeah. a couple years later we we kind of um really started you know hanging out and stuff yeah that's when our friendship kind of built was a couple of years throughout that time though like he really took us uh chris and i under his wing and um you know and throughout the off season we would chat but you know maybe go to a party chris or scott i used to have the most legendary parties um so we would show that was later dude i know but we still would you know do, do we do some events here and there um but we didn't really become like like friends friends really for a couple of years yeah probably till around 2000 2001 yeah or so. Uh, so i had to i had to prove myself to him <laughs> yeah how was that <laughs> i you know beating him and sliding you know what was weird was um when he came out when like when he says the man he's talking about craig harold right craig also Harrell, known man. as the haunt father mm-hmm. the haunt um father. When he came out, like he had gear, like Jeremy had gear, but it was super archaic. Like he had regular boots, no steel toes on him, nothing. This is before, like this is right about the time where I'm like, okay, that's what I'm going to start putting steel toes when I brought that into the picture. Right. Yeah. But he had boots that just were regular boots, no steel toes or anything. So I basically told him, I go, dude, you're going to burn a hole in those shoes in the first night <laughs> before it's over. You pretty much did. Yeah. Damn. So, <laughs> but that was like, couple weeks in through like because you told us you know go get these go get boots go get you told us this this, the second weekend you told chris and i you and trish i remember it like it was Mm. yesterday you and trish were like hey you guys should slide and we're like hey we don't want to you know because everybody else is doing it it's like there's gonna be like every single month there's gonna be a slider what's the freaking point and um so you guys were you know pretty much telling us well just do it because we you know they're not really doing it the way we're telling them they're kind of doing the thing so we think you guys will kind of excel at it so we did you know we got the stuff that they recommended obviously not the correct stuff but uh yeah so like a couple weeks after that is when he came up and he was like and you're gonna you gotta get these get these and kind of took us under his wing and yeah man. rest is history see, man. see anthony i was this is what i didn't realize until just now is like i was already evaluating back then mm-hmm. yeah in 90 you know in the 90s for the park yeah i mean when when it came to when it came to sliding scott was always very particular and 
critical on the gear, the techniques and stuff. That's the only reason why I got so uh, to the level where I was at um, was because of you know, he and a couple of the other sliders. And, you know, it was just he always was trying to make everybody better, which was was nice because the more the, the, the more people that were better, the better the event was, as well as the sliding show that we did at the hanging. Right. You know, because if you just have anybody go that thinks they can slide, it just becomes chaotic and looks ridiculous. Well, he continues so. to do that today too. I see it firsthand. He wants he wants mm-hmm. the best out of people, mm-hmm. and and he really just wants to get them at the at the best that they can be. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do see that a lot today too, Scott. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, like I said, it's just about passing on knowledge. Though it's not about hey, look at me, this is what I'm doing. I, I just want people to be able to do what they love to do for as long as they want to do it yeah. and be able to stop doing it and leave <clears throat> the quote unquote haunt world on their own terms and not because they got hurt. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. So safety was a big factor for him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, yeah. I mean, all the like slider tests that all came like later on through the years. Right. I, I, I personally never had to do that. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I think it really became a thing after I left. It did um, very much so. Yeah. Um, because I mean, don't get me wrong. Even I've had some incidents with, with guests because <laughs> you, they're unpredictable, man. Like they really yeah, are, everybody dude. has, you go one way and they just like, they go the way that you think they're going to go the other way. And then you just slam. Luckily, most of the time they're pretty cool about it, but man, if you get that one guest, it's, Bad. Especially them pre gamers, man, when they come in already drunk, man. It's already yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's always the alcohol that's the big issue, and and that's that sucks. And, and it, yeah. the downside is it's the nature of the beast in in this in, in that in, in this industry. And, right. and it's, it's the funny is. part is, Scott, you work at the event that serves the most heaviest liquor. Yeah. Of all, too. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That is my biggest pet peeve with that place, man. The liquor. Oh, oh my gosh! When we went to the we went to Midsummer Screams and saw their panel. Yeah. Oh uh, man, I was disgusted by the whole panel. There's a secret just, bar in this phase. And don't get me wrong. I'm I'm all, I'm one to drink. I'm one to have a beer, go have fun, do my thing. But it's like you're at an, you're at a haunted event. Like every single freaking phase had a damn bar, and I'm like, are you guys promoting a haunted event or are you promoting fucking alcohol? <laughs> I'm calling John Taffer right now. You know Please I mean? do call so, that monkey. Here's the thing, <laughs> too. Just, I mean, like I said, alcohol's always been, it's the nature of the beast. So it you, is. You, you run with it. But if you look at, like, Anthony, you've been to a lot of my, a lot of the practices with the team now, so yeah. you know. But if you look at a lot of the drills I do, especially with the learning how to stop, direction change, and bailouts. Rollouts and stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's designed with alcoholics in mind with people that are drunk in mind because they change direction yeah on a whim you know whether slow or fast i want them to just have their wits about them enough to where they're like it just reduces the risk of of collision right and injury to either to either party you know what i mean yeah no that's the last thing you want you want your you want your scare actors to be obviously safe the entire night you know whether it's it's it's, it has to do with violence you know drunk people i mean I've always thought if you, if you're gonna serve alcohol at an event like this, bless you, cough you, whatever you did. <laughs> he's dying on the podcast. That's what he's doing? Um. Anyway, uh, I I always thought too if you're gonna do an event with alcohol or any heavy liquor, there needs to be a way to like you wear a bracelet and that you only get so many drinks a night because it just gets out of hand sometimes. You know what I mean? Like I know that's where they make a lot of their money, but it's like there needs to be limits. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's muted. <laughs> Sorry. We saw a huge difference when um Knots yeah. opened up the saloon and were uh, serving alcohol. <clears throat> and um once once they did that, we saw a big transition in the in the crowd. Right. Yeah. Some of them a lot more fun. Um, but yeah. you know, when you have special nights like uh the power 106 night and all those other nights that they used to do yeah man those were brutal brutal nights um yeah. there were several times that we actually got pulled off the streets because people were just acting like idiots yeah, oh yeah do, people, people bum rushing the front gate yeah you know, then you see craig kind of kind of running up fog out. he's like get off the street get in the back now get in the back get in the back yeah 
you know, and we're like, okay, if he says that, then we know something's up. And then he yeah. come back about a half hour later and tell us, yeah, you know, we had we had a, a mass crowd of people bum rush the gates, hopping the turnstiles. And, <clears throat> shit. Didn't no. didn't we have um we actually had a year where somebody snuck a mask in and were wearing a mask and then they were going around like stabbing people or something? Holy shit. So there was there was a rumor that a guy had got a somehow he got a mask in and he had a knife too. Mm-hmm. and he was in a maze and now the source that i heard it from is not this is a long time ago but wasn't very reliable because the kid was a compulsive liar but he said yeah. the dude cut his chest protector across on the front of his chest when he scared him oh, he shit. went like that but he never <laughs> had any proof to, sh- to, to, Back to support that yeah. yeah yeah so it's like okay if he's gonna get that don't you think like street talent would get would be the more prominent people to get that because one yeah. easier targets two easy escape plan and yeah, it's darker yeah well, for the assist- theoretically i could, I could, I could go fog. more on the story of a guy bringing in a mask and just doing that right as far as the weapon goes i mean they're pretty solid when it comes to checking i don't know how it was back then if they were they were still padding down left and right no not no. really yeah, the they... when, when jeremy and i started they didn't have actual metal detectors well yeah but i know back in the day you know they, they, a lot of people would just pad down you know what i mean like yeah and they still do, still do that to some extent today at, at certain places but like, yeah major theme parks all have the metal detectors and stuff now so which is good yeah unless you go to disney like or, or universal studios got like a freaking look like you're going through the tsa dude <laughs> Yeah. I swear, I dude, they got while, so they got the that. they got you put your all your like backpacks and stuff, and they have like an X ray machine that like tells everything what's in your backpack. Like they had to stop me once because I had brought in camera batteries, but they're all lithium because you know a lot of these cameras take those kind of batteries. And mm-hmm. they're like, "What do you have those for?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm a I'm a blogger, and and these are my extra batteries." He goes, "Oh, okay, you're cool then." I was like, "All right, cool." It's like it would make sense when you have your camera equipment with you. Yeah, it's like, do you not see <laughs> the camera? It's literally sitting right there. I mean. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, things have changed so much drastically over the years, especially with safety and, 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 you know, th- with threats and everything. It's just, it's a big thing always to, to make sure to <coughs> always be safe with those things. You know? Yeah. So what about, uh, when, when did you guys, have you guys ever now, have you guys ever scared together? Uh, like in the huh? later years, like partners for a night or something? <coughs> We never part. We yeah. no, because you you know, you were always with <clears throat> Wade and um or the Goblin and all the other guys. Uh, Chris and I pretty much like stayed to ourselves. When Chris left, then I came and scared quite a bit with you guys. Yeah. Um, but I'll let you tell the story of the night that you invited us to go slide. Oh, with you. are you talking about your initiation night? Yeah. Okay. This is only him, <clears throat> not Chris, because it was only me that night. Chris wasn't think, there that night. No. Yeah. I th- um, did, I, did I tell you this story, Anthony? I think you told me at the rink on, on Tuesday. Okay, I, I'll, I'll explain anyway so everybody yeah. that, that happens to watch this will know. Okay, so again, 97 was Jeremy's rookie year, right? Yeah. So through the course of the night, I'm like, hey, dude, why don't you come and scare with us over on Schoolhouse Road by the knife shop? Because at that point, the knife and gun shop was next to the candy store. Right. On Schoolhouse Road. <laughs> and there used to be a big-ass tree right there in the middle of the thing. So what it did was it – it caused more shadow and made that corner area from the building darker. Right. It was a pretty so, prime spot. Yeah. It was, it was one of the hot spots. I mean, there was, there was a number of them. Right. And then they slowly started going away. But so I said, Hey dude, why don't you come and scare with us over here after the last, after the show? And he's like, okay, cool. What time? And I told him, I go show ends. It's like, a, I don't know. The show was what, like 30 minutes at that point. Cause it was Tom Clough and yeah. it always ran long. Yeah. So now, so, mind you, Anthony, just to go, just to backtrack about Tom Clough, that guy was, that guy was a champ when it came to writing the show. Was yeah, great. that was when the hanging was good. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. So, so, so Jeremy's like, all right, I'll meet you there, right after the show. Me, Wade, Bobby, I think Todd was there, and I think Mike, Scott Reich, Mike Reichman, who was sick. <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't he, didn't. he didn't. He didn't. He didn't jump in on on your initiation. No, was, but he. Um, but you have to keep Scott Tay. Scott Tay yeah, 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 yeah. But Reichman was p- positioned. He was in the prime position. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah. So yeah, Anthony. So you have to keep in mind this was my first year, and I looked up to these yahoos. He so, was coolest at the time. After just hearing that, now the story is just fucked up, Scott. <laughs> well, here's the thing. It was here's the way it worked: is we only. I mean, I, I was told this my first year too, which was the year before. It's like we only choose the people we like to initiate. Oh. Everybody else we leave alone. 
So he was one of like three people that that season that we initiated. Yeah. So what happens is we walk over there. There's like five of us, right? And I already told the guys before the show starts, like, hey, this is what we're going to do. And we're like, oh, dude, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> so we go into the corner. He's standing there clicking his gloves. And I'm just we, excited. I'm excited because I'm standing there with the vets. And I'm like, ooh, these guys want me to scare with them. Like, ooh, ooh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, mind you, like, I mean, it would have been great to just have him scare with us because I'd already been watching him through the course of the, the run. Yeah. So he gets over there and he didn't realize that all five of us surrounded him. Like, we had no way out. <laughs> the only thing behind him was the corner of the building. Yeah. So he couldn't get out, right? So we're looking at each other. It's like, well, I guess we should do it now, guys, right? And they're like, yeah. So we grabbed him, arms and legs, <laughs> put him upside down in the tree, and duct taped his, his ankles and his body, like to his waist. <laughs> Mind you, we didn't have a lot of duct tape, so it didn't cover his whole body. The idea was we were going to cover him <laughs> from his waist to his ankles. Yeah. You know, so he's hanging upside down like this and he's and his vest keeps going his face so he's trying to hold his vest up and then his pants comes undone and then he's trying to hold his pants on from falling and you know we're trying to hold them up like this yeah then they and pull I, my pants down <laughs> so we're holding him, right? his pants is open i gotta find the picture i wish i had it it's somewhere in my files yeah i'll find it too i think i have it yeah so you know <laughs> and then i start screaming and i go what's your name what's your name and because basically what i was trying to do is hand down the name that was given to me by the vets the yeah. year before, which was Major Fanugi, which I've never told you. Who, I've Ant never told you, Anthony. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Anthony. Yeah, I, I, I was told like, you. you. Told me. Yeah, I was yeah, like, you told Anthony, me. This is, this is something they gave to me like in my first year, like in the second weekend. Right. And Fanugi means fucking new guy. <laughs> right? So they called me Major Fanugi, and I, he had already known the story, so I told him, I go, what's your name? He's like, Fanugi. I go, what's your name? He's like, Major Fanugi, sir. <laughs> I think we had him up there for about. You went full know. blown full metal jacket on him, bro. Oh, I did. Yeah. I, did. I think we had him up there for about 10 minutes. I'm like, all right, we got to get him down before we get in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we let well, him Well, because as they were cutting me down, is when we they heard over the uh, walkie talkies, the security were being called. They were like, oh, there's some uh, rough housing happening <laughs> yeah, schoolhouse Road. in Schoolhouse Road. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was it was classic, right? That was, a, that was a great night. We ended up getting Chris too, right? You guys got. No, he wasn't guys... there that night. No, 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 no. But another night night didn't you guys um, get him the following year because that was at the end of the run i think i think we did but i don't remember what we did to him you guys i think you just duct taped him to a pole no you did that at, that was at cruise nest you guys duct taped him upside down to a pole with his legs up or you tied right. his hands because he one he had too much sugar and he had two ginseng pills so he's going oh, nuts. jesus christ <laughs> i bet that year I bet oh that, my god I, I really bet that year nazis okay. what happened to all yeah. their duct tape no, uh, that was ours. That was all yours. Yeah, that was, was, that was ours. Yeah, that was oh, ours. Okay. They don't yeah. provide that. <laughs> yeah. No one says you had to get it provided. I mean, there's other ways around. Well, that's yeah. very true. <laughs> we, we got away with uh, quite a bit. Um, oh, that's when the that's when the not family still owned the park. That's when it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man. So I, I got to hear more about uh, what was it? 2015, man. I want to hear 2015, the return of uh, Ghost Rider. You're managing him that year. Oh. How does that go, so, man? So this is when he was still living in Huntington with his wife and his cousin. Right. And we'd been talking about, you know, Haunt for months already. And he's like, you know, Mo, his cousin, he's like, he, she's going to work this year. And he's like, I, I want to try to come back and work. I'm like, okay, so what are your thoughts? And he's like, well, I'd like to come back to Ghost Town. I said, well, okay, I can, we can manage that, but you got to go through the audition process. And he's like, okay. And it almost didn't work because he was late. Yeah. <laughs> I held a spot for him so he could audition for it. And, right. you know, once he did that, I'm like, okay, here's your paperwork. So when he came back and he, he already touched on that when, when, um, and your, your, his podcast with you is that he says, oh yeah, I can work the whole run. And then he only ended up working about half. So yeah, he, he was right. I was kind of pissed, yeah. you know, because I went out on a limb to save a spot, but it, the best part, the big part was he didn't have a makeup spot. And when he was there, he did everything he could. So it, 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 it didn't reflect a huge, huge difference, at least for me. I mean, it's a noticeable hole when, when somebody, you know, what they bring to the table yeah. is gone. Yeah. So, and he used to, he worked with, um, Ron to work with Ron a lot. The cop that works with us right. rogue. Yeah. So, um, so they worked together a lot and that was great for Ron too, because 
they, uh, you know, Ron, when he wasn't, when Jeremy wasn't there, Ron didn't have a, have a, a scare partner. Right. You know, he was on his own, but I didn't ever have to worry about him. He always did his thing. Right. Yeah. You know, but he wanted to do a revision of Ghost Rider and he kept showing me the mask and I'm like, dude, that looks good. And he tells me, dude, the mold fucking broke. Uh, well, you were, you were there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was at your house. I, I casted it at your house. You, cause you, no, you, you at the I time see you mold that I, well, you must've not been at the house then because I did it at not. your house. Yeah. I cast it at your house. I couldn't get the freaking thing open. That's right. So as That's I'm right. okay. I, <clears throat> cause I was trying to that, help you crack the mold open. Now I remember at that point it'd been a while. So, and I kind of rushed it and I'm like, all right, well, let's just get yeah. this shit molded. Um, and yeah, it, the, the thing fucking cracked like right around the neck area. I'm like, yeah. Fuck. yeah. So Anthony, I mean, theor- he- go ahead, go ahead, Jay. I would say theoretically I could have done more pulls, but I, I was, I was, I was running so behind on getting the mask done. This was like a week before the haunt started. Yeah. So, right. I'm like, I have to paint this thing. I need to put the, sh- yeah, I, have, I had all the so details much on it and everything. Yeah, he waited, yeah. he waited a long time before he actually started sculpting. I see. Yeah, I, I took, it took a while to sculpt. sculpt. Well, and when I did, and I, when I sculpted it, it took me a while to sculpt it because I wanted it to be pretty detailed. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then when I casted it, you know, obviously, it, yeah, that broke. It was- all in all, it still looks pretty damn good for a quick, a quick uh, turnaround on it. Yeah. But I, Jeremy, or I mean, Anthony, what he didn't touch on is that he did touch on the fact that he used to do his makeup thing and I, I, uh, his mask thing, and I stepped in to help him out. Right. His workshop was in my garage for two years. Yeah. Because I, he, think you, he got, I think you and I were talking about just briefly a little bit, just to. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved everything from his old workshop in Santa Ana because he was moving out of his friend's place. And I'm like, dude, my garage is plenty big. Let's just move it in, the, in there. So right. we did, and we set it all up with his huge ass table it was probably what like 12 feet by eight feet yeah like it, it was a it was the size of a piece of plywood so 12 yeah, by, piece, about yeah. 12 by eight yeah so he had the frame built we he deconstructed it and then we rebuilt it in my garage right and that way we had space all the way around like we could pour on one side um take pictures in another spot on that side sculpt on one side and you know and paint on another side so there's plenty of space for everything yeah repairs everything yeah. Now, did you did you get to pick up on some of the stuff he was doing too, Scott, at the time, or did you? Yeah, like he taught me. Like what I would do to make his job easier was that anytime he had a mask to make, I would do the base layer. Right. You know, because that was the most tedious part. Yeah. I'd base yeah. layer it out <laughs> and make sure it was flush, and then he'd go in and do all the molding, or all the shaping. Yeah, he would. Well, itself. he would. Well, he Scott would do the pour. He would pour the latex and do the latex. He would clean the the, the face, you know, uh, uh, all the flange, and then he would do the base paint. <clears throat> and that is like huge steps, you know. Um, so he would do all that for pretty much every single face that we had an order for. Right. <clears throat> and then I would come in and just bam, 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 just kind of assembly line all, all the, the faces because the way that we would do it. Um, our basically our specialty at that time, like the the reason why we had um people were so interested in it is like every single face was literally different right. in some way some shape way you know some in every single anyways yeah so and the way we did that was we augmented with like tissue and latex and we kind of just we sh- we basically re-sculpted a base face you know and gave some like yeah. different features the pool was the same the pool yeah. was the same but everything that came out of that for augmentation was completely different from yeah each other. And then we would, uh, um, and then we had different bases. So we had a skull base. We had a, just a, a normal, you know, uh, average man face. You know, we would have all these different bases and we would mix them up. So like we would do like a, you know, a skull piece here and then we throw some skin or tissue over it and give it like that decayed look and, yeah. and just kind of make every single face kind of different. And we would let the clients, uh, you know, kind of, you know, uh, art directed a little bit we didn't go too far with it but um you know so that like he would do what scott would do would just he would kind of just get like the first few steps done yeah on all the faces that we needed to do and then i just come in and do all the you know the artistic detailing st- and stuff yeah the detailing because that way he could spend more time on the detailing for us to right. get orders out yeah because then, at one point in time we were shipping we were we were producing masks we had a bunch of pools we produce them we get them done and ship them out. Yeah. You know, a good amount. So. Yeah. It was, it was hard. It was, I remember the day I called Scott, I was at school and I was going on like 
this was like my seventh, sixth, almost like, dude, I was going on like two hours sleep each night. School was fucking crazy. And it was right before the haunt season. And um, I called him up. I'm like, dude, I can't do this shit anymore, man. Yeah. Like going from LA to back to, you know, way to park and, you know, trying to get these, couldn't do it. And it's a toll, like, dude. Yeah. yeah, no, it's especially uh, if you catch that traffic on at the right time, dude, it's fucking, yeah. it's brutal. Yeah. Already and tired his school was day. like in the middle of LA. It yeah. So yeah, school was in Hollywood. I was living in La Habra. He was in Buena Park. So I was bouncing and I was fucking nonstop, dude. Yeah, dude. Oh, and, it takes a toll, man. Uh, it does. And then, um, so you know, we, we, I told him, I go, we got to say, stop taking orders. Basically that's it. And just, just put a hold on it and see what happens till I get out of school. And then I just started working like right out of school. Um, and yeah, dude, there was no, there, there was, was no, break. no lull at all. He went right into work. Yeah. And, and then, you know, that industry just kind of just eat you up. So here we are 12 years later, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what's funny is I don't know if he ever told you, but you know who one of Jeremy's instructors was Anthony. Who? Neville Page, a judge from Face Off. Oh, dude, that's all. Yeah, I used to love watching Face Off, dude. That was one of my yeah. favorite shows on Sci Fi. Me and my dad yeah. would watch it every week. And a lot of the yeah. stuff they created was pretty creative, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, the really thing good. is, too, is that we got to a point, like before he got in full swing of school, we started doing storyboards on uh, character development on, like, we would, cre- we would want to do a series. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, we had actual, I think I did one or two actual descriptions of a character. One of them was, the 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 fat head guy you remember that one jeremy this guy right here yeah see you see him right over take him down jeremy so this, guy this right one here. yeah this guy i actually named zeke <laughs> okay and he was actually a henchman he was basically a debt collector for the mob that he was a, he was he was a um he honed his skills for uh by fighting underground that's and full contact cool. fights and stuff like that, break bones and shit like that. And I even used the guy like uh, you know who Whitey is, right? The um, the actual right. mob boss. He Whitey was Bulger. Was Whitey. Whitey Bulger, yeah. Whitey, Whitey Bulger. Bulger. Yeah. So what I did was his uh, Zeke's boss was Whitey Messina <laughs> instead. So we kind of tied that together, and then he had some other clown ones. I think I did one other. I yeah. might even have it on file still. That's bad. yeah. So it, that series was going to be kind of like our freak circus series so he was going to be the uh ring like the ringleader or the uh, you know um and then um uh, and then we had you know a few other ones and but we just never that was where we stopped we never really got fully into that series but we you know we did the uh we did the series for the dark realm haunt that was before me that was before you and that's where the um you know those decayed ones came um came which we called we called it dark realm and no i thought uh, i thought eternal was before that eternal that was reliance. It, it, yeah the eternal reliance was the skulls yeah and that's where the augmentation started right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. but then so eternal reliance was the first basically first series the second series was dark realms which ended up we ended up designing those for the dark realm haunt uh the home haunt um and uh, that was basically my deal with him was like, okay, well, we'll develop these characters and just backstory for your haunt and stuff. But I want to be able to create a series of them. And we did, uh, which was a lot of fun. And he wanted these like mountain men, almost like the uh, Hills Have Eyes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of like, like that. Kinda like and, and wrong turn. Yeah. And wrong turn. Yeah. So that's what basically this whole top row is. Um, so we created a bunch of those faces and, um, that was our second series and right. our third series was going to be that whole circus thing. And um, yeah, so that's where it kind of, but there's, there's just, another series that, that he actually got a, a company reached out to him. It was a haunt. In, I think it was Washington Bennett's curse. Oh, Bennett's curse. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, did. When it was all vampire based. <clears throat> yeah, we did. But that, we only did one flat. We just did one sculpt. Yeah. Yeah. We did the one with sculpt teeth. with teeth and then we yeah. augmented on top of that. Um, nice okay which was cool so we did that was a special only... but ahead, that, was a, that was a special one for bennett's curse yeah because um, he did we did augmentation and jeremy actually did a, a handful of ones with super dope paint with translucent paint on it and it had veins and shit oh, in it that's badass yeah yeah so yeah that was so, probably my favorite yeah that, that, was, that, that was a good series that was a really good series. actually a lot of my um all of my 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 stands my face stands are yeah. that face 
That's cool. Oh, really? Yeah. So all these masks that are sitting, the, the base that these things are sitting on are that face. That's, That's cool. Crazy. I had the um, I had a, a stone cast of that face that I used for a doorstop for years. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> for I was just freaking gonna say that. Fucking years, man. And like it's so funny because people would come over and they would look at it and just be like, okay, that's a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you got a face for a doorstop. Yeah. It's it a was... face like this. Yeah. With with white eyes. Oh shit. Yeah. yeah that is so it was super yeah. creepy. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> man yeah that, that i mean i i remember we had adapted a little bit on that too and then and then scott after he watched the podcast he was like oh he forgot a big portion to bring up and that was the, the big portion right there and i was just like, yeah well there's like, there's a thing too like i mean he did a lot of we did a, a handful of series and i helped him with the tail end of it right but he his his forte actually was custom one-offs right one yeah. there's there was you know good money in that like he he mentioned that he did lucifer's mask right. which he still uses to this day like sometimes when he goes to ren fair and he dresses up as lucifer yeah he wears that yeah um he actually did my he did my last two renditions of pyro one was the one four knots and then he also did my yeah it's up there no. somewhere right no yeah. that's the third rendition that's my pullover oh is it yeah oh okay so uh, he, i don't even remember one. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so and he also did he, we did we did rogues together that one was fun it was super again. easy because he didn't want anything super heavy as far as detail work right i i enjoyed doing his because he he specifically was like i want old school ghost town and i'm yep. like i know exactly what you want dude and he did it man his costume when he was out there he looked old school ghost town it was yeah, yeah. it was so amazing so yeah and then we did um he was always at the uh, house too on his days off he yeah. would drive in from Corona and hang out at the house with us. Mm -hmm. Nice. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then I did the orc for James. Yeah. He um, fucked that one up. I was so pissed at him. That one was sick. That one came out. That was one of my Full favorite head, sculpts. Aaron, uh, Anthony. Full head. Full head? So, yeah. With so, hair. Damn, dude. Yeah. Damn. It had that's, hair. That's a lot of detail, too. It was a huge paint job. And, um, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a pretty cool mask. I don't even remember what happened to that mold. I think we destroyed we, when, it. When you moved out of my garage, you're like, destroy all the molds you don't want. So I, you wanted yeah. to keep the spawn mold. So you took that home. <clears throat> everything yeah. else you didn't want, and we destroyed. Yeah. So um, we did. And then I did a, a couple other ones. I did like a, a, we did the fox one. Yeah. And then um, we did, uh, I did the skull for Mike. This. Oh, yeah. Somewhere Dude, over that there. Skull, can, you, can you see it right there, Anthony, over his right shoulder? Yes. That thing was so fucking sick that thing does look dope though dude yeah that's fucking dope so he had a full like chest piece he had arm pieces like so when he looked when he was out there he looked like a freaking skeleton walking but with around. hair dude it was I dope a, with hair I, I think i need a mask like that for my uh when i do my 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 wrestling style promos for try not to get scared challenge and bring out my fiend character perfect right yeah. there you even <laughs> have that mold anymore jay or did mike buy it from you no, I destroyed it. Oh, that was one because it, it was cracked. It was cracked all the way through the face. Oh yeah, that's right. And I was like, just get rid of it. I could sculpt a new one, but no, I never did, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So it was cool because when we did the skull, the skull. Um, so that was like one of the first. Actually, that was the first skull that I did. And I'm like, you know, we should create a series. Um, that's when we started doing the series of the augmentations, and um, I I sculpted two different type of skulls. Right. And um, I used that one and then the other two. So it was, and I did that for two reasons. One, I wanted different skulls as a base, but I also did it because we could do three pours at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, for the, for like at the mat. When we did our first show, we Mass talked production. to, <clears throat> we, we talked to a few people and they're like, come prepared, man. Like, come just overdo the masks. It's going to be your first show. You may or may not sell. We sold out our nice. first show yeah it was in ohio congrats man that's awesome yeah, that was yeah. that was a haunt con right is that haunt con yeah we took 213 212 masks or something like that and we sold out within the first day or the whole the whole week the whole then? the whole weekend the, the whole weekend, weekend. so nice. from, from friday to saturday or from friday to sunday yeah yeah <clears throat> and then uh so we were like okay well did, yeah, did you week. guys did you guys sell out like midday at the convention or to the point where you just had to shut down after that or yeah we we sold out middle of sunday and you just shut it and, down after that huh 
Yeah, done. and then people, and then we didn't know better. We didn't know any. We didn't know better. Like we were like, oh, well, we're sold out, and that's what we were telling people. Oh, we're sold out, you know, because we still had the displays. Right. And they're like, oh, you guys don't have any more. I'm like, no. And they're like, well, you sell the displays, and I'm like, oh, we kind of want people to see what they what we have. You know, we didn't yeah. want to sell those. Um, and then I didn't know anything. I didn't like take orders or anything like that. We were just like, I'm ready to go fucking celebrate. Yeah, <laughs> he was, that was his first show. So we didn't, he didn't. You're like, I had a successful had no weekend. Idea. Yeah. Two steps ahead. I'm like, yes, we did great. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I knew nothing at the time, man. Like yeah. I, I didn't know anything about um, budgeting any, all the, the masks properly pricing them. I didn't know shit. I was yeah. just like. I want to make these cool freaking faces that are super comfortable and, yeah. you know, people can afford. And I think that's the reason why we sold out is because they were fairly cheap. Right. You know? Um, yeah. So. And at the time they were original, not very many people were doing what he was doing. Yeah. They were all different. They were all yeah. different. And that's the reason why we sold so many. Cause they have all these haunts that were like, Holy shit. I can like do my whole fucking haunt with just your faces. And that's pretty much what happened. People were buying like 10 at a time. I had one guy buy 25 of them. You know, and we're like, yeah. uh, yeah, just take your pick. You know, it was, it was yeah. amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. You know? And then you think if so, you would have took <laughs> orders that day, you, you, yeah. you would have freaking, it would have been so much dude uh, that people wanted us to keep buying or uh, that was, yeah. And that was before, I mean, I knew he had already been working uh, doing that, but I, that was before that was way before I got involved before, yeah. way said, before, hey. way before that was literally the year after, um, let me see. It was the year after I left Haunt. So that following, it was af it? after the following season. So I, I I was off a season. And then uh, that that following March was when, March or April was when Haunt Con was. So that's when we started When was doing that like them. 2000? Was that like 2007? Six, seven, seven? eight. 2008. Yeah. 2008. 2006. Something yeah. Like that, yeah. 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 Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. That's so awesome, we were, we we pretty much ran for two years, two and a half years, um, and then a year through my first year of school and uh, yeah, you know, a big called. hiccup that he ran into though was in the beginning he didn't like he didn't have a res he didn't have like a resale certificate or anything right so he was paying full retail for his materials right yeah and you know and like he was saying he didn't know how to set things up margin wise so like if he was paying wholesale for his materials he would have made way more on his masks at the time. Right. Yeah. So once, once, once I started talking to him about that, we discussed it and he's like, oh, I don't want to do that. I go, it's going to increase your margin. Yeah. So did, didn't you get a resale license towards the end? I did. Yeah. The yeah. last, yeah. So in the middle, when Scott and I had that conversation, I'm like, well, then we need to figure this out because yeah. we're clearly getting momentum, but we're kind of hurting ourselves. Right. Um, I knew nothing about business. Um, yeah. So uh yeah so you know i that's when i started like looking into it and i got my resale license i got my you know all that stuff and uh and then it started slowing like kind of yeah i you know everything changed at that point right um, but it was funny though because um when i did that first show um i met uh the at the time uh a gentleman named wes who owned cfx uh masks he did that they do the silicone masks i don't know if you've seen those Right. Um, but he has because uh, he's seen me in John's video. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they're huge. <laughs> they were the first ones to do silicone in the industry. Right. And uh he he came up and he's like, dude, you should you should do some silicone masks. He's like, You clearly have great faces uh, and you can sculpt and stuff. So he came went and showed me his stuff. And I'm like, wow, these are pretty fucking rad. I go, How much do you charge for these? He's like, Oh, and he told me his prices. I'm like, I'm not I don't, I don't want, I go two things. One, I don't want to charge that much. I wasn't into like charging, you know, 600 bucks for a fucking mask. And then yeah. two, I couldn't customize to the point of we, of how we were doing it. We, we had a little gimmick right. and it was, it clearly was working. Um, but I mean, he his ended operation up, took a ton of money too. his operation took a ton of money and it took yeah. a lot of, uh, I mean, it was, it was a lot of technical stuff too. And I was just like, I wasn't, I didn't want it. I wasn't into making anything complicated. I'm like, all right, pour, leave it in there, pour it out. Like I wanted it fucking simple. Um, that's why I didn't do foam. Um, right. Foam was a little bit more technical with the ovens and all that shit. And I'm like, and they don't last long. Um, at least they don't last as long as latex, you know, did. So I was just like, yeah. I want comfort, speed, you know, um, yeah. inexpensive and just looking fucking cool. Yeah. And that that was, yeah. that was my, our whole forte. That was the best route with him for silicone or for uh, latex. But mm -hmm. when we did my third generation pyro face, 
he's like, Hey, I'm going to try to do a polyfoam inlay, you know? Yeah. So he did that. He's like, come over and take a look at it. And the idea was, you know, theoretically the idea was good, but it was so thick that it didn't fit against my face. Yeah. Right. Because I didn't yeah. have your positive. That's why yeah. it was, yeah. it was really difficult to do. So, you know, it was, um, it was I worth think, the shot though. Yeah. I think if we did, if we were doing it to this day, I, I would still be doing, we, we might do a couple of silicones here and there, but uh, it's just uh, the cost is just too much. You know, I mean, they look cool and they're comfort, they're comfortable, but there's just too much technical, technical shit in it. I don't know. They're too. hot as hell though. Don't, don't. But you, well, I mean, yeah. masks in general are pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> nah, cause so, yeah. They, they don't breathe. They don't breathe. No, they right. can't. It's like, yeah, you got very limited breathing in, in the mask, especially cause it feels like you're just being like kind of suffocated at some points too. Yeah. And especially with, with like latex and silicone, there's no absorption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweat, at least with a prosthetic foam, there's a little bit of absorption. Right. So that stuff would hold in the foam a little bit away from your face at times. Yeah. Um, so it was a little bit better. Plus when you sat in front of a fan and that thing soaked with, with sweat, it would cool you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. We thought about coming back and I kind of was analyzing, you know, what could we do? I mean, here's our competition. Do I want to compete with these guys that are doing the silicone masks? I did not want to compete with them because like they've already got it all nailed mm -hmm. and I'm just like, let them do that. And so Immortal's but it just, cream of the crop right now. Yeah. Immortal does some sick stuff, man. But, I, yeah. I see um, a lot of their stuff are everywhere now, like yeah. literally everywhere. <laughs> um, I still think Boneyard does the best work, but that's as far me. as like prosthetics and stuff. And, and as in, as far as silicone faces. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, in, you know, I mean, props to CFX for leading, paving the way and doing their thing. Uh, they they do great work, and so does Immortal. But um, yeah. a lot of their stuff looks repetitive. Um, right. With uh, I think it's Boneyard. I could be wrong. I think it's Boneyard effects. Their shit is like, it doesn't look like a silicone mask, um, and their sculpts are top notch, and every single mask looks different. It doesn't look like it was sculpted off of the same, you know, life cast. Yeah. And you can kind of you can identify that through the other two companies. I mean, right. personally, I I I I see that. But that's there was just one other artist. company too that was out there that I, who knows if they're still around, but uh, their silicone mask they didn't have that um, that uh, stretch mesh inside to help. Yeah. Um, it was a SPFX. Mm -hmm. You know, I I seen a couple of his masks. I wore one, but the problem is like they did it didn't have that mesh in there for strength. So yeah. with terror and and he didn't warranty his stuff. No, he didn't. I understand, yeah. yeah. So, so, but the, yeah, yeah, there's there's quite a few of them out there. So yeah. But anyways, <laughs> so that's that. Yeah, so that's that. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I I really like hearing that because I know we only got to really touch on that so much uh, last show. So it's cool to kind of hear like the a little bit of a brief overall story of of what what went down and how it went down because. It's a part of well, your there's life. Actually, always... There's there's a little more of a caveat to what he was talking about. Right. As towards the tail end of the business, he wanted to venture into doing complete design. Right. Of characters for people's events. Like mm -hmm. if somebody hired him on to do a face. He's like, that's great. But I want to do a complete design head to toe costume and everything. Yeah. Give me your give me your concept of what you're doing. I'll design the character. But that's we just cool. never got to that point. Yeah. That was like our next step of doing more, I guess you can say. Yeah, uh, that would have been that would have been really dope to see that. To see yeah, that. now Adam and Je Adam Jess FX does that. Mm -hmm. See, but that's where the whole schooling kind of came in, in the whole and in, in learning all the digital aspect of it, um, right. because I wanted to be able to get that to do it in digital form and show people in that way, as opposed to making a whole, you know, because sketching and drawing wasn't like my thing i always yeah. it's either i do it in 3d or i do it in real life well not to mention too with 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 on digital too you can just seriously just email it to them and be like what do you guys think you know exactly and yeah and that's how it was uh essentially when we were doing the one-offs with people i would tell them okay what do you want to do what what's your your base do you want to do a goblin do you want to do a clown do you want to, what what do you want to do and right. then i'll be like all right cool just search we just search for reference you know tell me oh i like the brow of this one i like the mouth on this one i like the cheap you know i like the structure of these and the texture of this the paint job on this and be like all right cool and that's where i would come up with the concept right um you know because it's just always best to run with reference yeah um, 
know, so it's now it's the same thing. It's now, you know, now I do what they call photo bashing, where um, I just take, you know, a picture of somebody and then I just photo bash and just concept on top of their picture. Right. And then go, okay, this is how you want the face. And the same thing with the, you know, costume. It's like, oh, okay, I'll take some like photos and then paint in some stuff and be like, okay, well, here's an idea of the costume. Let's do some renditions of that. Um, so that's pretty much what I've been doing for the past 10, you know, 10 years. You got a nice little, you got a nice little drawing tablet for that. Those things are legit, man. <laughs> I do. I got my, yeah. I got my, my pens around here somewhere. Dude, he's got so much shit. It's not even <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 cause you know why it, it's funny. Uh, and we mentioned spawn earlier. One of my, I love Todd McFarlane. That guy is fucking mm-hmm. a genius dude. And if oh, we you, got a story about that too, but go ahead and finish, Anthony. If you if you ever he did a podcast about like how he started Image and and yeah. how he's a part of all that and like it was really the business aspect of like when he got into the toy game and stuff. Guys are fucking genius. I love Todd McFarlane. Um, but on his desk is a giant ass fucking drawing tablet because he you know yeah. he still does Spawn to this day and other things is among that. So like just to see like. The fact that that guy is that fucking—I mean, obviously we know he's that loaded for starting Image and and doing mm-hmm. you know the toys and everything. Him and Rob Liefeld, I yeah. think, yeah, and uh, so did Jim Lee too. Yeah, so. Um, but just to see his desk on the in the in the in the podcast, like he's drawing on the desk and stuff. I was like, for any artist who ever wants to make it that big, like that guy's a fucking inspiration right there, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the character artists that I've worked with, they do that. They have the big Wacom tablets, and yeah. you know, they do that. I I cool. I tried using them. I used them on a job once, and it just slowed me down. Right, because I wasn't used to it. I'm used to using the the tablet, you yeah. know, and I just put it on the desk. And it, it, to me, it feels more like using a pencil. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just for me, it's like when the when I'm on a tablet like that, but that's the, that's the actual screen. It. It, it covers up what I'm trying to do. Right. And it just doesn't like, it doesn't work for me personally. So I, I like to use the, the actual tablet. Yeah. So I like, yeah, my cousin does that. He's got the uh, surface pro and every now and then when he goes into draw something or a logo or stuff, he got, it's got like a little, like little, like freaking finger thing right there. And he, I, I have that yeah. for my, my iPad yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I use procreate that way. It doesn't freaking like that way. It doesn't like move anything or mess up anything. And he's drawing and stuff. Yeah, 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 I know. I, I, I didn't have that for the longest time, and every single time I end up, pre- I press a button or I do something, and it's like, fuck, man, I have to keep undoing. And you gotta start over. Yeah, and then you, once you get that thing, you're just like, it's pretty dope. Yeah, it's freaking just freedom to do what you need to do, you know. Yeah, that's what's so up. So here's it. Here's it. Here's the Todd McFarlane story I was telling you about. So he and I and his wife, we decided to go to Comic Con. San Diego. Yeah, San Diego, and Todd McFarlane was there. Right. And he submitted two masks in the uh, the contest. One was a completely charred out, burned one, and the kicker was like, he was only going to do one, but the second one, the first pull was fucked up. Right. And it came out super ch- looking like charred. He's like, dude, I'm going to do two. I'm like, what? And he explained to me what I'm going to go, dude, that's perfect. One was like super clean spawn right. with, with the actual cowl part or the cape part. Right. Yeah. And then he did a charred one. So we 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 put that in the I don't you didn't want anything for that did you? No, but I got offers for it. Yeah, you That's got awesome. offers for it. So we put it in there, and then he's like, "Dude, let's wait in line for Todd." So we did. And as we're going, he, he we got there and we started talking to him after he got his signature. And Jeremy pitched an idea to do a licensing agreement with him. That's like fucking. When I was cool. watching him from a distance, I was about six feet away taking pictures, and I was watching. Todd's expression, he genuinely looked inter- looked interested in the idea. Fuck, but it dude. never came to fruition. Yeah. It's, that it's so him, cool. I told him that I had two faces in the gallery, the art gallery. And he's like, oh, that's so cool. I'll go check it out. I don't know if he ever did, obviously, but um, but yeah, I didn't um I we uh we got a couple offers to buy those and I didn't want to sell them because they came out fucking cool. You still have them to this uh, day? I don't accidentally the uh, I I know. Know. cool. I don't, but the, here's the reason why. Um, my school has them on display. Oh, cool. Yeah, as like art, as student artwork. Yeah. Are you passing. shitting me? You never told me that. Yeah, they have both of them. Rid of them. Mm-hmm. No, they got, they have both of them. They, uh, they asked uh, artists, like all the students, like, hey, we're, uh, you know, we're opening up a gallery. We want to put some artwork in there, blah, blah, blah. Do you guys have anything? So we submitted and uh, they're like, dude, bring, fucking bring those things. So I brought them. Are they still uh, there to this day? 
Still there to this day. Dude, when are we going to that gallery? I was going to say, Scott, I was like, we got to make, make a trip out there or something, yeah, man. The, yeah, the next time I go out, um, we'll go We'll go check it out. I'm just saying something's coming Dude, up I, in you August. never told me about that. <laughs> yeah. You know so. what's funny is he got offers. He got offers for that mask, too, and because I took pictures of it and posted it, I was getting offers for it, too. <laughs> yeah. I think the highest, the, time, the highest we got was 800 each. No, I never told you, but I got a guy that offered me 12 for it. That's okay. I would rather have them living somewhere where yeah. I know they're safe and being, you know, taken care of. <laughs> well, the problem, the displayed. problem too, is that you know copyright issues. We didn't want to. Fall but that into was that, that was the other thing battle. too. Yeah. You know, yeah. even though the law is you can do a one-off and sell it, yeah. you just right. can't do multiple recreations of it. Well, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't help that you have a wife that's a, a, a lawyer, an entertainment lawyer. <laughs> so yeah. She, <laughs> yeah. She's just always like, you know, you got to get a license for that. You gotta yeah. Get a license. Uh, doing my short film, man. Oh my gosh. It was just every single thing was like, okay, you gotta get a contract for that. You gotta get a contract for that. We gotta get a license for that. Gotta like, get permits for this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, it was crazy. Hence the reason why I don't want to do my uh my writer uh web web series because it's just it's a fucking nightmare. Dude. Give it to a small guy like me who just like can get away with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> short film just, uh, was uh -huh. three days of horror. Three and that, days well, of torture man yeah but crazy. that was just up here that was only yeah that was one weekend out of the three weekends we shot yeah 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 i, I was only i was only privy to that one weekend that we went up north he, did, he, uh, he didn't need me for the other other two weekends i'm like that's cool just let me know yeah i know because yeah. you're like i don't want to go do that shit anyway because that shit was <laughs> we were it was 112 and we were inside of a barn that sounds a lot of fun it sounds like a sweat was, lodge <laughs> i it was so funny because we uh we were right before we were wrapping for not wrapping, but uh, breaking for lunch right. right before. I had no idea. I was like so focused on getting a shot and we got the shot and I was standing there and I'm like, you know, I, I got to go like sit down and go in the AC for a second. We had a trailer that someone let us borrow right? and had AC. So I went into the trailer and I literally walked in, went to the bed and I just fell. I fell over. Fuck. And, and then right after I did that, um, uh, somebody came in when I think it was I think Lisa one of our makeup artists came in and checked on me and woke me up and was like hey dude are you okay and I'm like yeah and she's like oh well the owner of the barn just said hey you better go check on Jeremy because he looked like he, he looked like a ghost <laughs> so literally if I didn't yeah. go inside like I my body just told me hey just go inside real quick if I didn't do that I probably would have passed out damn dude which yeah. I did and I theoretically did pass out <laughs> yeah but imagine passing out in the fucking hot ass sun man right in a freaking worse. barn that's got nothing but like freaking just hay you know, and dirt hay and dirt and rusty nails and spiders and bats and yeah was, and you know what luckily the last day we were in an air-conditioned house and yeah. it was getting late in the day so it was kind of dark yeah you know but you know we took a break sat outside on the deck and did smoked whatever. cigars i didn't make his job any easier though because i wanted to beat the shit out of his production guy my producer, yeah. Yeah, as producer, I wanted a fucking, oh, dude, I want to wring his neck. Yeah, that's like we can. We can that's, a, that's a whole other podcast topic yeah. <laughs> that we can talk about that whole shoot. But well, you know, <laughs> on the line of on the line of podcast, man, I hear you guys are starting something, man. What's going we on? We are. Uh, we're starting next week. Actually, it's uh, it's been a, uh, it's been how how long has it been in the making, Scott? Months. 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 It's been a while, and it's, it's, that's it's, it's been my though. fault. It's, it's been my fault. Been crazy. I came up with the idea um, before I started my that other job, and then I started the other job. I, I asked him to be a part of it, and I started the other job, and it just like my fucking time went away. Yeah, <laughs> and then with the kids, hours and, a week. That's why. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but you know, Anthony, you, you, honestly, you inspired me to do the podcast. Seriously, one hundred, one hundred. You and uh, and uh, uh, homeboy and hotline um inspired yeah, me and it wasn't it man. yeah you know and i've chatted with him i don't know him um yeah but what got me to contact him was i uh we have a mutual friend uh uh named daryl who uh i was close with who had passed away and i posted uh his on his um, anniversary date and right. he was like, oh, man, Daryl, like, was the man. I'm like, how the fuck do you know Daryl? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're just some random guy that does a freaking podcast. Like, yeah. how the fuck do you know Daryl? <laughs> Anyways, um, so, yeah, you guys were 
a big inspiration for uh, oh man that's awesome man so it's uh so we're not going to do anything that you guys are doing we're uh we're going to focus on um character development uh slider development um back you know character back stuff like that um so when we bring guests on we're going to really focus heavily on on that stuff not um that's why uh, I, I asked Dieterman if he, if you would, uh, I'm gonna ask you right now, but uh, we would actually like you to join our uh, our podcasting network. So yeah, we can help advertise it and and get the name and, and be part of the family, man. Like mm -hmm. we always say, man, we don't, you know, with this podcast network, uh, you know, I've explained it a bunch of times, but we we don't take, you know, everything's 100 percent yours. All we want to do is is help the little guys up and, and just advertise and just and just you know, let's get other podcasts out there, man. Everyone has different yeah. interests. Everyone has different tastes. So if you, yeah, I was, yeah. was going to ask you anyway. So, <laughs> oh, so it worked out. Well, it worked out. You, uh, you met you well, cause you mentioned it last time and I saw yeah. that you're promoting it and I'm like, Oh, well let's just jump I mean, on that. We're up and coming and we already got like, well, I got like four that I host. So, I mean, those are right. automatically put in, but I got my Nino to, to get his podcast in there, which is a really good podcast as well. Um, but I, I, when I heard the idea of this, I was like, I, I would love to have these guys part of the family. So, yeah, you know, so. You know too, Anthony is a, a, a different spin that we're going to try to do is like, provided we can get a hold of these guys, is, but we, we have a list of the old school talent from yeah. not nah, like, because I'm still connected with a lot of these guys. I was telling Jeremy, it's like, Hey, let's see if we can get these guys on. So as we start going through, I'll reach out to them and see if we can get the old school talent on to do episodes with us yeah. and there's also we also have uh we actually have some somebody on there let me let me look at the list again real quick uh, while he's looking that up uh, i want to show you something old school anthony jeremy you'll get a kick out of this too because this uh, was oh yeah, here it is you came into ghost town here it is knights of horror we have knights of horror on oh, here do you? <laughs> on our guest yeah. list <laughs> oh man <laughs> Yes, you so guys we see will. that picture? Old school right there. You know what, Scott? 96, too, 96. You're showing us it. Go send, send me it too, and I'll put it on the screen too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's the that's the slider from Ghost Town in '96. Um, that's badass, man. But yeah, I, I'm I'm honored. I'll, I'll you just let me know the date, and we'll do it. Fuck yeah, that. yeah. Well, we don't, um... We're not going to interview this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, dude. When you come on, then you can actually talk about what you're doing and i know not, it's, it's vice versa us. it'll be the it'll be the it'll be the reverse for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh yeah it'll be it'll be fun we're um yeah so we're just yeah so we start that next week um i, mean, I gotta i gotta i gotta hit up sammy too sammy's gotta be a part of that dude yeah yeah no i want both uh, of you guys yeah. to be a part yeah. of it yeah, yeah, no, yeah for sure sammy's you know, off i think sammy's new day's off right now or friday saturday sunday so Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll make him. it we'll make yeah, it work yeah. for just sure. let us know and i'll hit up sammy and then he'll be more than welcome to talk with Everybody's yeah saying. well yeah when i'm talking nights of horror i want the both of you because that to me that's nights of horror is yeah. both of you you know oh. i know that sammy's in arizona doing his thing good for him yeah um you know it was good to see it was good to see him back with rick you know when you guys did the rick west oh, uh, interview it felt, it felt normal again man it really did like i i genuinely that was the best part of my week last week was just it just felt good like yeah. i had a genuine good time doing the podcast a good day and you know having sammy back Rick was our last in person, you know, like in studio podcast, and he was our first back, so it was it was nuts. But you can see it into you can see how excited you were, and yeah, you were like totally just... into it. Um, so yeah, that was dope. Oh that yeah, man. but congrats, man! I I can't wait to start listening. I am definitely going to be listening, and also welcome welcome to the family, Madhouse. Yeah, thanks, man. Madhouse yeah. Podcasting Network, man. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be uh, so we're actually going to do quite a few next week. But we're not going to start, quote unquote, promoting or posting until we get ten episodes deep. Okay. We want to get a, we want to get ahead of the game. Yeah, you know, just in case you know shit that's, happens. That's, that's what I do all the time. I always try to record a bunch. That way, it's like okay, week after week, I got something. So yeah, yeah I'm still waiting to see my cousin's pod podcast. I know I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that edited for you this weekend. <laughs> that way, you can get an early sneak peek of it. Yeah, he nice. just did. He just did a podcast with with Rib. Yeah, that's so. a good one. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm looking time. forward to seeing that. It's funny because uh his um his cousin did uh a tutorial with immortal masks because he, he was doing he was a, he was one of their mold makers. Right. Through and he did it, he just did a tutorial video with um uh Stan Winston school. Oh nice. 
Yeah, so I was watching you know, cuz I was I was subscribed to those guys and um I text Scott and I'm like I to sent him a picture and I'm like I'm watching your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so does. listen, I've already heard I, I know Jeremy uh last time we talked about it you were, you know, there's always that that, that one in the wrestling business they call it for the guys who are coming close to retirement and whatnot, one more match. Yeah. With both of you, do you guys have that one more match that you can just pull out of the stops one day? I haven't seen I haven't seen where my one more match is yet. Dude, I've been in the, I mean, you know how long I've been in this business now? Yeah. And I don't I don't see an end to it yet. In that sense, granted I'm in a different role now, but with, you know, the the evolution of my business, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be around. Yeah. Now, I mean, granted, I'm not getting any younger, so I'm going to do as much as I can while I can. And I want you. True. I want you sliding on your knees to your 80. He probably will. Probably will. For for clinics, yeah. <laughs> In development of others, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, as far as actually being full time talent again, I, I I don't know. I've considered it. Um, as far as when, eh, who knows, you know, um, 50, 50th is coming up. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll see. So, but at the same time, it's like, I really enjoy the role that I'm in now, you know, because my, my biggest, my biggest, the best part for me now is watching any, you know, any of my quote unquote people develop into you know, you know, develop over the years into the talent they want, want to be, you know, but I always tell them there is no cap to your learning. You know, I mean, yeah. if you think you've reached the top, just understand that there's more above to what you're, what you're re- striving for, you know? Yeah. So, so at this point, you're pretty much like, I'm going to hang it up on my terms and, and exactly. I, yeah, exactly. I mean, Hey, if I was, if I was approaching somebody asked me, Hey, would you be interested in being talent for us, you know, for a season? I would consider it, but there, there's a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of details that have to be worked out for mm-hmm. that. You know, I mean, like what these guys go through now is, is, is just as bad as what we went through back in the day. Right. You know, and it's like, it's, is that something I want to go through again? Or do you want to help the, the, the current generation through it to make it as easier for them as possible? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so, it's it's brutal to to do it for a season. I would do a yeah. I would do one night. Um, I talked to Scott, and like I mentioned on the podcast last time, I talked to Scott about potentially coming in to do Dark Harbor, but it doesn't look like they're going to be doing it this year. So, um, yeah, there's no word yet, but I mean, we're inside of three months. So yeah, we're we're already mid mid summer. So yeah. It's it's this little. I mean, I mean, once we once I know, you guys will know. Yeah, I mean the yeah. knots. I mean knots just announced something today that they're going to be announcing something on what the fifteenth or the seventeenth or the fourteenth. The thirteenth, I think. Thirteenth. Well, yeah. their event is happening on some level because right. they've yeah. already casted people. They've gotten their their leads in place. They're they casting. Co- they're already talent. doing costuming already. And yeah. So you know, Maze it's probably that's built, yeah. That, that's probably going to be their um their announcement their names their their PR thing they do yeah like um, i've been working with i've been kind of uh giving this new talent that's trying to audition there a little bit of guidance you know he he i saw a post on facebook that he was looking for some suggestions so i reached out to him directly and and you know kind of gave him my background and and then he told me what he wanted to do and i just recently got um his audition video and you know a lengthy description of what he was trying to do so i gave him my feedback on it you know and told him exactly i go i don't know how the how the process is now but something like this would be good for this area uh you know this is where i would put you but on the same token i would actually be inclined to reach out to you and find out more about what you're gonna uh, what you're gonna deliver with the character beyond what he showed you know the kid i mean the kid's got talent I can see that, but it also looked like he was holding back. I think a reason yeah. why I, I asked you this question a lot is because the selfish part of me wants to see it just once time. You know what you I know, mean? It's, what? In person, well, you do the um, see the what? cool pyro. see see, see oh. pyro. The cool thing, um, actually, oh, I'm hope it was a small part of me that hopes Scott doesn't really do the lead thing this year and is just open to be able to go 
and do some haunts um because you know he and i well, kind of, well he and i talked about wait hold <laughs> on he and i talked about him coming up here and then us going to go check out the higby haunt okay uh it's higby right yeah it's uh higby's horror haunt and it's higby's the Heathen legion haunt. team oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard scott, of them. they follow uh, us john and ashley scott yeah Two yeah great people yeah um to go out there and check them out um maybe we can scare well maybe i have some information for you okay do you want to share it on this do you want to yeah. share it? can it's you share it out there and i, I don't care You're allowed to share it. It's, okay yeah i've accepted a role at hayride as of oh. this morning oh dope okay yeah. cool so okay well you then, know you know fuck you then yeah. whatever <laughs> Leave, we'll me leave, things, me, leave me hanging for a season again. That's we'll have to see how things pan out, dude. I mean. <laughs> That's so. right. I'll go hang out with Anthony. Anthony have fun, will be my have fun bro. <laughs> <laughs> I am, man. So it looks like Anthony and I are going to Hayride to give you a hard time. That sounds like fun. You won't even see me. I'll find are you, you. Are you? Uh, you are can't you be miss a, you. I'm in management. You're man yeah, no, we'll find you. No, you like, won't. Like, I won't be able to find you. Like, if somebody calls me on the radio, I'll be asking who's looking for me, and they'll tell me, and I'm like, I'm not here. Oh, I'll, I'll yeah, talk, you think I'm busy. I'll, I'll, I'll talk you to John I'm, Cook directly. You seriously think I'm stupid enough to tell you it's me? I'll just ask, what does this guy look like? <laughs> Pretty simple. Uh, I'll, ask, I'll ask the homie John Cook directly. Be like, John, there you go. we need your I'll help. Just tell man. him, dude, tell him I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I, I'm excited. We'll have to see how things go. You know, I've got, I, I'm excited got, to see what cool. they do this season, honestly. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Congrats. So, Congrats thanks. on that. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, Had uh, the interview last week and got the confirmation this afternoon. Um, I think I just received the, the uh, paperwork email a little bit ago. So I need dope. to fill that out and get it back over to them. Nice. Nice. That's there, good, you know? man. That's good. You know, the thing is, too, too, is like I, I, I didn't. A year off was fine, but I didn't want to take another year off. Yeah. I don't blame you. You know, I mean, I, I, so we'll just have to see how things pan out. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping I can get some other things done before the, the, the run starts, you know, because I've, I've been in communication with some other areas about, about training mm -hmm. people. So we'll see. Now, I don't know if you could disclose this, but are, are they, are they going to be in San Dimas again this year? Are they going back to, the park uh I'll, I'll let you I'll, I'll let that come out because i don't know if i can disclose it i haven't signed an nda but i don't want to yeah, yeah i don't want to okay. open that door yet oh, yeah okay so, i get you i feel you yeah i feel you yeah keeping it nice and secretive yeah i like but, it. no i'm excited about going back and and doing what i love to do you know no yeah. so should be a fun so, time yeah, yeah. i'm I know, i'm i personally am, i'm glad that you're going back and doing your thing yeah so that's Have awesome to. be a whole yeah. new uh, no, I, whole new playground for you to play on man yeah mm -hmm. Fun. I mean, I, I, I made good, good use of, of the year off. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I was able yeah. to do some research and experimentation with a lot of stuff that I will implement into my, my business program, you know, for all. I remember you and I were talking a lot of that through the pandemic too. I'm like, how you been doing? Like, you know, he's yeah, yeah. I just been researching and just trying to find out some new stuff I could teach and stuff. So, yeah, I haven't been to, uh, I haven't been to the, since 13th floor was, um, a part of it. Dude, did they add any sliding capabilities when I, there at all? When at I went in, in 2019, it was all on like grass and stuff, so you couldn't yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. And San Dimas, from what I understand, is the ground didn't. It wasn't conducive for. Yeah, sliding. It, it was really bad gravel, like old kind of yeah. rundown gravel. So. <laughs> so. And yeah. it, it, it was more. It, that was more the the drive in. So they were just kind of the the, the characters were kind of just going in between to keep the the vibe and, and the show going. Right. Yeah. Where it wasn't really about like how you see at a traditional haunt where they come up to you and scare you now in, in 2019 they revamped the event and, and started the whole midnight fall storyline right so it was really it was really a more interactive thing where they had townspeople walking around you could talk to them and uncover the story and then each eventually when we talked to every townspeople we, we spent like 45 minutes just talking to all the townspeople and eventually it just leads you into the mazes and the mazes continue the stories and then the hayride yeah. continues this you know hayride's kind of in 2019, it was kind of like the prequel of how Midnight Falls became with the curse and everything. So I'm kind of anxious to see how that that event develops now that 13th floor has ownership. Yeah, and especially with Crazy John involved in it, that guy is he now is he is he still doing Hayride this year? Or? Well, he's dude, he's the creative director for because I know uh, floor. I know right now he's in Phoenix. Uh, yeah, doing for doing uh, what's but he's no, he's involved. 
he's involved still. And that's as far as I know. I mean, I when I spoke to him last week. Yeah. You know, and but he oversees several of them, right? Yeah, like basically, yeah. What's the he's one? the creative Beer director farm. for the entire thirteenth floor. Yeah, company. he's at. Yeah, he the one is in Arizona Sphere Farm. Yeah, Sphere we farm, did that yeah. last year. Uh, which, which is funny because we have one here in, in uh, near me, which is complete garbage. But put on my thirteenth floor. I don't think it's. A, I doubt. It. I well, when I when I heard that they owned the Fear Farm in Arizona, I don't think the two are connected. Uh, at least I would I hope not. So. I don't think I so. I would hope not because the one here then, is. Uh, we got to open up. We got to open up the cookbook and just sprinkle a little magic and boom. I know someone needs to. <laughs> and you, they can get a five year old there to do better. <laughs> no, it's pretty, uh, uh, I, I went to Fear Farm last season. And it must have been because I went on like the the final weekend, and it was already past Halloween. It was a week after Halloween, so it was like the last, it was the first weekend in November. Mm-hmm. But like, dude, like not everything was at full capacity with the act. Like, I think a lot of the actors bailed out after Halloween. Um, yeah, because, like everything. Yeah. There was a lot of filler spots when I was walking to the maze. I was like, oh, easily could someone could be right there scaring. So you know, and mm-hmm. then they had a big ass cornfield, which would, from what I heard, took about anywhere from thirty minutes to an hour, depending how lost you got on it, and. In between, they had, like, scenes and stuff, and, like, half of that was closed off, like, the better half, and only half of it was open, so, it, yeah. It, it was, sounds like it. a lot of people yeah. are like, yeah, I'm only available till Halloween. Till Halloween, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, a lot of people just after Halloween just are done with it, you know They what just I mean? don't yeah. care. Yeah. yeah. So, it was always, it was really hard for us um, to, to continue haunt uh, when we would do November 1st and sometimes November 2nd. Yeah. It was so hard to go past Halloween, because Halloween was, like, the night. I always just know? think about. you go all out. I think about uh, Dia de los Muertos. I'm just like that. Let's just keep doing it to that, you know? <laughs> exactly. You yeah. know, honestly, I'm not going to lie. Like when Haunt did the Bare Bones Wednesdays, I missed those nights because mm-hmm. when they did that, it was like a $25 ticket and they got everything except for shows, but the hanging was still included. Right. That's and cool. those nights were sold out and some Fridays and Saturdays weren't. They were busier right. nights than Fridays and Saturdays. It was yeah. insane. Because like, of the ticket prices like with cheeses. Yeah. It was like yeah. shooting fish in a barrel. Oh yeah, That's you cool. know, and then they did that one year, and then they did away with it. Mm-hmm. Maybe because their Friday and Saturday nights were not selling out like they wanted them to. But they were making up the difference on Wednesdays. I know, I completely agree. <sighs> but usually, because you know? usually because if you think about it too, Friday and Saturday days are upcharged a little bit more because of the yeah. day. Yeah, and and yeah. we can have were, a we can have a whole four hour podcast about what Knox does that doesn't make any sense. You know? Yeah. But we won't do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to to not only to I know we're going a little bit far back, but we kind of jumped Oi. into everything. Oi! Oi! Hey, Oi. tell Connor not to interrupt. Jeremy says, "Quit interrupting, Connor." Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, you guys, you guys, honestly, uh, I don't think you realize how many people talk about you guys to this day character wise and whatnot like people remember that shit and you guys think it's <laughs> intruder i hate it when you have your headphones on because they can't hear me <laughs> intruder uh but i i just don't think you guys realize how much people still talk about you guys to this day you're, you're you guys are influences on a lot of people man and and you know when you hear like scott i know you get pissed off when people call you legend and stuff but dude I mean, fucking Bronx, dude. He always says that. You, shit. But you see how you see how much you thought my face. I mean, you thought my face lights up when I hear these stories. That guy is on a whole new level, dude. He's a fanboy. He is a diehard fanboy. I don't know who that is. That's uh, uh, Matt Barrera. Uh, you Matt, you yeah. met him. Uh, uh, that's the thing. Yeah. Is I go I go to the haunt. I go to the uh, events now, and it's just like Scott yeah, has to. Out, Matt. Scott Scott has. He's to, a big uh, fan of yours too, Jeremy. It's funny because Scott has to like reintroduce me to a lot of people. <laughs> And then he talks yeah. crazy. And it's so funny because he talks about, you know, haunt, you know, people from haunt and I'm like, oh yeah, so and so. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? And he's like, dude, you know, give me their either give me their character name or he'll give me their real name. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I I know I either know one or I, I know the other. It I can never know both. And it's like you'll never that, forget me and Sammy because we're two tall towers that just walk towards yeah. in the haunts. You know, yeah. you know what's you know what's interesting though, Anthony, is like Going to Midsummer Scream with Jeremy when he absolutely knows nobody, oh, that's funny. <laughs> and we everyone knows like him. Like every well, nobody knows him. I had to introduce him to I don't know how uh, probably over a hundred people. That right? was 20, 2019, huh? Yeah, yeah, like, it was dude. crazy. We went through that. I was like, oh, it's my buddy Jeremy. Yada yada yada. I give him a quick, 
run down and then he'd be talking to him. Somebody else I know would come along. I'd step out and let them do their conversation. If he gets done before I am, yeah. he comes over and then I introduce him to them. To them. And it's funny so, to you get the question of, do, do you work a haunt? I'm like, I did. I did. I used <laughs> Scott's to. all duty. You freaking worked nuts for 10 years. And I'm like, oh yeah. And then they start talking about the character. Oh yeah. yeah. I remember you. Bah, bah, bah. So speaking <laughs> of mid, speaking of midsummer, the spirit awakens. Um, I do recall hearing that there's a special day happening during that weekend that, you know, we'll need some celebrating. Yeah, this dumbass right here is at- <laughs> <laughs> talking to me. What? Yeah. So uh, we're going to Friday, August 13th. That's uh, Friday the 13th. I lucked that's out awesome, this- dude. I lucked out this year, man. With that that's one. awesome. So Saturday when we're there, we'll get some beers after the show yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Go get some dinner and beers. And Down. We'll go right across the way there to the plaza. There's a good Mexican food place there. I was telling you about. That's where be... we went when I was out there for that security gig. Well, cause fucking when I showed up to practice on Tuesday, everyone was talking about that, and I'm like, oh, is it gonna be like a fucking crowd of like ten following us to the damn thing or what? Probably. Yeah. Well, you know what we can do is we could just fucking leave sneaky like. Yeah. Fucking. Well, would you rather have three, four people celebrating your birthday or like twenty? Doesn't bother me. It depends. <laughs> on, it depends on what kind of chaos he's wanting. So how old are you, 21? 20. I'm going to be 23. 23? Oh, my God. I remember those dudes. <laughs> I started my haunt career before he was even born. I know. I know right? You're old enough That's to be my crazy. dad. We've had this discussion many times. I know. What year were you born? 98. Oh, my God. My goodness. He wasn't even a thought in his daddy's sack yet when nope. I started. My. 90 well, so my here, but okay. my my first year, my first year your dad's sack was building up yeah it is again <laughs> oh man uh, that's funny yeah it, yeah 98 and uh, that's cool yeah i've been uh now i'm 23 and look where i'm at my youtube career that's right man keep it up dude i love it yeah well uh i i did enjoy speaking with you guys i, I don't want to give all Look at this, look at this. He's getting bored. That's why he's cutting us I'm not off getting right bored. <laughs> you got a fucking podcast that's going to be launching that's going to probably tell your whole life story. Why not right. save it for that? We can say, we can tell it twice, three times. Three no, times, no, four. No, we, it's up to you. I, it's, it, is, it is funny because the first three episodes are basically, well, the first two, two and three, that's basically your we're life story. Talking, we're, story. Giving our, yeah, we're giving our history. <laughs> we're already now, giving our. So you I, pretty much, you pretty much already did our first I got, episode. I got, I got four chapters with fucking Scott Dieterman here on the channel. <laughs> That's so, hilarious. And I, and I just, I, there's and I'm probably just, more, huh? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Matt wants to do one with you, and yeah, Matt wants to do a, a podcast with me, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's the only he way. He won't come on, on unless, show. unless I do a podcast with him. And it's probably just gonna be him sitting there quiet most of the time. Me, you talking? Matt, uh, uh, Matt, who? Bronx. Matt, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, just talk it's to crazy. Him. <laughs> you just, I know, dude. He'll be like this. He'll be like this. Yeah, it's like, but it's funny though because every time I do a podcast with you, it's like I learn something new every time. It's like, oh, I forgot to tell you this on that podcast. I'm like, yeah, true. But at this point, I, every time I podcast with them, I'm like, what haven't you done? Like seriously, seriously, if you wanted to get into the actual full life, not outside a haunt, there's a lot more to that. Like I could, go, uh, I yeah. could go, I could go full, full thing on my my whole path and water polo. Can talk you know, about your ridiculous blonde hair that you had yeah, when I first met you. <laughs> my God, and you I look. Can talk about my snowboard career. We're gonna do a documentary called Pyro: The Scott Dieterman Story. There you go. <laughs> hey, you know what? That blonde hair and the chia pet chin was in back then. It was. Don't oh, be a hater man. because well, actually, when you met me, I was bald, fucker. That's where I went, dude. Yeah, yeah. When I when you met me, I looked like a freaking Backstreet Boy, so it didn't matter. Yeah, he looked like Kevin from Backstreet Boys. Does that mean Scott hey, looked like a member of NSYNC or what? No, here's yeah, the pretty thing. much. Here's the thing: he, he's bitching at me for having bl- frosted tips. He had the same thing. I did. <laughs> it was pretty bad. So your first episode, you guys are gonna do a uh, the, the opening song is Backstreet's Back. All right. That's right. There it is. No, we're gonna do Larger Than Life. (laughs) We're gonna have the In Sync Backstreet Boy battle. Yeah. (laughs) No, but there's. I mean, that's the thing too. Like, my hair played a little bit of played a little bit into my character on uh, certain years. Like, there was one year that I was completely well for the entire run. I was completely bald. That was in '97. Right. I had this weird alien face, and 
it was it fit good here but it was so big that it had to be glued back way up here which i personally loved that my yeah. that was my favorite character that you did yeah that was one favorite. one i met you in that face but two yeah. it i just i just dug it I, you hated it i dug it I was that like, was a random random face too that lynn found that happened to fit me yeah he looked fucking menacing it looked awesome that's because i had a bald head so they had my whole head painted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so as things started to develop like then i became the super angular face it was based off a comic book character a couple of comic <laughs> characters and brain matter right here i had spiky burgundy or blonde hair and then moving into the first rendition of pyro same thing and then I would start wearing a do rag with a bandana or just a bandana. And then there was one time where I shaved my head completely bald, ran with that for a few weekends, and then Bicked I did a mohawk too. Huh? Yeah, I it all the yeah. way down. And then I did a mohawk too a few years. Nice. Yeah. And my makeup artist, she's like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the, the prosthetic around the mohawk. That's badass. So it went like this because see how my hairline's fucked up? Yeah. The prosthetic just went like this around <laughs> it. Yeah. So it looked cool. Right in. Yeah. And she would, what she would do is like, I had this brand on my face. So she would take that brand and pull it all the way back to my, to the back of my head. Not to mention your, uh, infamous, uh, pyro Darth Maul look. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first generation of pyro when the yeah. uh, spikes were here. Mm -hmm. And Probably. you know, what's funny is that actual character design was based off of a character from angel. Oh, the that's vampire. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Buffy. Yeah. 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 I remember when I re-sculpted your face, you were telling me that. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Did you like yeah. Frankenstein the two or what? No, um, I told Jeremy, I said, okay, here's the story. Yeah. This is what I want and add the brand. Do you still so have I that told, face to this day or no? Um, I do. Well, I have the third rendition, which you've seen, which is very similar, but it's a little more streamlined. The actual spikes and nails are a little more defined. Um, I do have a couple of old pools that have been sitting in plastic bags in my garage. Um, I think one of them or one or two of them is the, the second rendition. And then the other couple are the first rendition. You need but to get none some, of like, them is the pyro. You need to get some like display cases for those, like, and put them in like those, you know, that way they, they stay yeah. nice and you get, you yeah, get, one of the, get the fake heads and then just put them in those like glass display cases. They look cool. Yeah, the yeah, foam gets that. brittle. I have a, I have my, one of my pulls in my Ghost Rider, and yeah. I found it, and I went to take it out because I wanted to display it, man. And like, I just touched it. it oh shit! It turns to dust. Yeah. I was like, fuck. So I kept it in there. It sucks because I can't display it. You know. Yeah. It's almost like have, you gotta I, spray a clear coat over it to seal it. Yeah, I don't have any of my of that sculpt. I don't have anything to show off on that sucks because that was my very first sculpt and i don't have anything Damn. and i think they don't i don't think they have the mold anymore for ghost no, Rider. it broke oh. it broke yeah, yeah. that's that a, sucks. steve steve petterson wore that face for a while he did yeah resnick yeah it's resnick mm -hmm. i know this is so. a little kind of like curveball though but that's how that's kind of the same way how they do funkos too right they always have initial sculpts and whatnot and yeah i think so yeah yeah because if you notice a lot of them have like some of them have the same numbers and whatnot so they just mm -hmm. pull from that sculpt and then yeah, I know, it's always, I know that was random, but <laughs> no, yeah, no, no they have a so. um, they have a base sculpt and they go on top of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. But it's funny too because like um, when the first few years when I started doing Lucky, right? Um, I took my character, my costume design, and Scott was so <laughs> fucking pissed. Scott was so fucking pissed. No, no, no. I'm no, laughing no. about. Yeah, I know, I know what you're laughing at. I know exactly <laughs> what you're laughing at. And I'm gonna save that story for when we have Wade okay. on. Okay. See. But um, the uh, because <laughs> Wade's gonna be fucking he, he exactly. Was so... See, that's why you know this is. <laughs> I, I'm I consider sorry, this Wade. podcast. This is the this is the podcast that promos your podcast right here. We're we're advertising what you're gonna get a preview of in their podcast. So, so funny, the dude. um, you know, so uh, yeah. So when I did that character design, I I really because I I wanted him to be very um uh energetic and um with the sliding i wanted uh his costume to really flail when i ran his i wanted the costume to kind of flow and really have like this a lot of fringing right so um scott had the, scott was doing this belt he did this belt for years um one where he would just cloth for every year once yeah so um and i i thought it looked fucking cool i was like that's that's super cool and i was oh look at that ah. motion design oh my god Shazam. 
<laughs> um, and uh, so I wanted to integrate that into my costume. Um, he was a little like, dude, why are you fucking copying me? And I'm I was like, like, fuck it, really, dude? But I'm like, it's a, it's it's more of a, a homage to you, dude. Like, oh, that's, yeah, that's him blowing smoke up <laughs> my eyes. <eye. laughs> and um, it really was. But um, Scott's a dick and he just wants to bust my balls. <laughs> so I did, I did that. I did it differently. He did it. Um, he had really thick, really thick ones. Right. Um, and uh, I kept mine very thin. So I, it was just, I did it. I kind of did the same thing, but I did differently. I, I put, made mine different, different uh, heights and levels and lengths and all that shit. So, um, but yeah, I just thought I would. Get, My, that's how anyways. mine started out. Like it started out as different levels uneven. And then all of a sudden it came to like a point. Right like yeah. this and i'm like oh that looks kind of cool the funny Probably. thing is like i don't have the original belt that i started yeah i got ripped off all of my shit got stolen so i, I had to that. make a new one fuck i remember that night yeah. dude that's not to mention i i lost over two grand in cash too yeah what are you, what are you doing scott dude after, well, I, was, after I was, was actually selling pads he was you know, on he was the pads. he was the knee pad guy and he was ordering, he was selling the pads and he had a, he had a lot of people that gave the money that weekend. And, uh, we all went out for tacos afterwards and he kept the, his box in his truck, man. Someone fucking jacked his box. Wow. Yeah. Cause it was too tall for my lid to close. Right. Yeah. So, so he would put it, he would put it at the, the tail at the end of his truck and he would just close the lid as much as he could. And we went out there and he's like, dude, my box is gone. And we're like, yeah, it was open. It was open this much. And we were right Damn. there. We were fucking right there at the window. Like you could see his truck. Yeah. Like we were right there. We're like, how did this happen? <laughs> what did he we do I wrong? Wasn't, I wasn't. I wasn't really pissed that all my shit got stolen. I was more upset about the money. Yeah. Because that wasn't my money. I had to go because I went all of the stuff I was doing. I was ordering through a shop. Right. Mm -hmm. So and because I was tight with the owner, he wouldn't make me pay anything up front. He's like, just get the order, we pay it, and then you just bring in the cash when everybody pays up. Right. Yeah. You know. So, you know, <laughs> luckily he he understood, he's like, dude. I understand. Just pay it off when you can. Right. Yeah. You know, but at the end I had about 500 left. He's like, dude, you're good. Don't worry about it. That sucks. That so, sucks. Yeah. Suck. It sucked pretty bad, man. I mean, you talk about fucking days today and now fuck. That's nuts, man. Dude, it was crazy fucking because nuts. like during that time, people were ordering pads, gaskets, and caps. Yeah. Like, by far the recaps were the thing. Right. I mean, there were days where, you know, weeks, weekends where I'd come in on a Thursday or Friday it had to have a box of like 50 caps, a dozen sets of pads, and you know maybe six sets of gaskets. It's like a big ass box like that. I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna bring this in? I know you're pulling you're pulling up like a vendor shop in fucking backstage yeah. and shit. You know what I mean? So I would bungee it to my haunt box. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's nuts. You were yeah. like the uh, you were like the haunt dealer. <laughs> Pretty much. That's hilarious, man. You know, I mean, well, it's like you know people. There was a lot of people that needed it, but they didn't have the outlet to go to. It's like, hey, I got the outlet. Here's the order form. Here's the prices. Right. And we're like, yeah. shipping? I go, yeah. I go, you think I'm going to cover your ass for shipping? You know? I know. It's like. So it was only, I was only charging five bucks for shipping. Yeah. It was from getting to the, yeah. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it is what it is. You know, you, you like everybody does. Like you make a little bit of money for your time, but that's it. But I wasn't price gouging them by any means. You know, I made a little bit of money for my time, and that was it. Now, Jeremy, I forgot to ask you one question that I always ask people on my podcast. I think Dieterman, I think Dieterman answered it on his very first podcast. On all three, because I, I forgot. Always change your answer, huh? Well, no, because I came to the conclusion that, oh, no, this is the one that was my favorite. What's your favorite horror movie, Jeremy? Oh. <laughs> he is a what? picky bitch, Anthony. It's that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I, I have several. Like, are you talking overall? It does it have to be horror? <laughs> well, what do you What are you thinking of? Joker. Not character, jackass. No, joke. The movie. Oh, Joker. Oh, okay. He said, yeah. "What's your favorite horror movie? Not horror character." But that's not horror movie. Um, I honestly, I would have to say, um. <clears throat> One that's up on top that I get comes to my mind right now is Rob Zombie's Halloween. Oh, that's a the first idea. one, huh? And the the, the the yeah his Halloween. It's yeah. Part that's two. what I said too in the first one. Yeah, and um, 
it's and it's you know don't get me wrong i'm a huge halloween fan i love the originals yeah but that that one he took it to a whole other level um at least for the first half of the movie until the studio took over and was like no we got to make it like the original um i love what he did with the character i love that he showed the um, asylum stuff uh, it, it he showed true psychology when it came to the characteristics of Michael Myers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and it had his grunge look, which, you know, gets old after a while, but for that film, it worked fucking beautifully. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so I would have to say that's, I, I won't say it's my favorite. That's one of my top. Yeah. I have, I have a lot, like when it comes to horror movies, like I don't really have a favorite. Um, I mean, cause I love all the conjuring uh, that whole universe is, is great. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's really hard when it comes to an overall film because I'm so particular when it comes to character development, story development, directing, right? I, I'm, I'm, yeah, like he said, I'm, a, I'm so Dude, You fucked. should hear him after a movie at the movie theater. <laughs> if he doesn't like it, he nitpicks the shit out of it. I go, dude, just let me enjoy the movie. Just let me be cool with the movie for the way it was dude. you know I was the fun, but the funny thing the funny thing about that <laughs> is is i always got dinged as a negative person when i would critique a fucking movie no i and do it, it all just, the time dude i, fucking I know watch a lot it, of movies and and it's just like don't take me to a movie that is shit like i'm sorry if you like this franchise <laughs> i'm sorry if you like this franchise but i can't and, and i already know a handful of these sliders are gonna get mad at me for this one because i've had a deep conversation about this fast and furious needs to go Fuck that fucking st- dude it's for me it's like it's not like oh my god it's a great movie it's entertaining what is it like a slider thing yeah it has to be because it, it, I, I don't know how do you fucking, go from fucking racing to let's do a heist that's the fucking worst franchise I, ever I, but it's made billions and billions of dollars i just like it because it's entertaining and, and that's, that's the, what i say I go, yeah it's not a and great see, movie, but and that's the thing it's like i'm you know i'm not going to like it's it's doing with it's it's purpose right it's making tons of money it's got a fan base. Yeah. Fuck it. Who cares? I love the first one. I enjoyed the second one. The third one was, you know, entertaining, but four, it just got really ridiculous it did. and unrealistic at that point. And that's where I kind of tuned out. So um, they're planning on, so. there, there's a talks of them crossing over with Jurassic Park. Yeah. That's stupid. What? Yeah. yeah. Now the, the, the fast, the fast, uh, Saga is supposed to end after the next movie, which is ten. Yeah, but it's I mean, gonna be a two out, part. It's gonna be a two part. It's film. a two part film. Yeah, it's ten and uh, it's ten and eleven. Uh-huh. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't even. It's don't gonna even, be I, a two part film. I'm like, uh, ha, 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 ha. yeah. They're filming it right now at Universal Studios. Uh, they, what ten? Yeah, because the, Vin Diesel's been seen on people going to the back lot. Which I, I like Vin Diesel. Don't get me wrong. He's a great actor. I, I really do. I mean, I like Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I love him. I am Groot. Yeah. Pitch Black. Pitch Black. Yeah, Pitch Black is fantastic. Chronicles of Riddick. Riddick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. He's he he's got good roles. He's got some good roles. He uh, he's been seen in the back lot. He he would stop trams and like give shit to people and say hi to everyone like that. I was like, that's pretty cool. You know. Yeah. Just happy. Yeah, to have, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Happy to have everything back, but. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick little speed round of things for me, and you guys just answer first thing that comes out of your mind. This is actually a a game that's been uh, oh he's actually got a format i do uh no this is good this has been a game that was uh it was on my nino's podcast out loud which is part of our, our network go check that out but um he does speed rounds with his guest and it's just the first thing that comes uh first thing that pops to your head uh so i'm gonna list the name of things you guys first thing that pops to your head uh and so yeah uh alien or predator alien predator okay and it, it's I not gonna be it- yeah, I think for me it's just because the whole stalker part of Predator, and I like his his dreads, yeah, and his mask. Yeah, it is dope, and it's not going to be all horror related things. It'll be a bunch of random things. So, uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Pepsi. Pepsi. Uh, Beatles or Stones? Stones. Oh, dude, Beatles. Hello. Stones. Oh, man, I'm getting two different answers every time. It's great. Uh, Freddie or Jason? Freddie. Jason. <laughs> Every McDonald's or Jack in the Box? Jack in the Box. Uh, Jack in the Box. Dude, That's... their soy tacos are bomb. <laughs> <laughs> their their oil tacos, love them. Uh, best drunk food on, on the planet. Talk about these right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 
that's awesome. You don't bring that's, it to the show. What the hell, dude? That was dinner right there, man. Nice. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ford or Chevy? Chevy. 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 Okay. Uh, last one. Let's see here. Um, in and out or five guys? Oh, man. That's a tough in one. In and out. I'll take in and out now when I'm not a fan of five guys at all. I, I like both, but in and out for overall. Overall. Price and, you know, taste, everything. Actually, for me, I'll like in and out, the fact that they're super simple with their ingredients and they still yeah. taste good, that's a huge plus. Nice. The five guys is pretty yeah, fucking bomb, though. Man. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Yeah. I think they're overrated. They're, they're, so. over, they're overpriced, that's for sure. Damn sure. But yeah. they're, um, I still think they're pretty good. Uh, well, gentlemen, hour and a half. You got any more, Scott? I know you have something up there. You probably did. I'm sure I do. <laughs> I, I would have. You're t- eager. You're eager to cut this off. So it's all good. I I'm, would not, have I'm not eager to cut it, it off. I'm running out of things to fucking ask you. <laughs> see, this is, this is what he does on. This is, see, this is what he did on shoot the shit before, dude, Jeremy. He's like, <laughs> I try to cut him just, off like four times. <laughs> yeah. And he asked a question and then doesn't he finish the answer. He's like, okay, so, you know, to wrap it up, I go, dude, we're not done. Because he didn't let me finish the answer. <laughs> oh well, no. God. The thing what would happen with that is we would start the answer. It would go off to something else. And then I think we're done. You're like, oh, wait. But I didn't finish what I wanted to say. And I'm like. So that's his fault. He'd, <laughs> he'd get me trailing off something else. And then I have to come because back. Because you would interest me in something. I'd be like, he'd be like, oh, by the way, I, I did this. I'm like, oh, you did that for how long? And then we get into that. And it's like, okay. And then I'd forget what the original question was. <laughs> yeah. Then we kind of have to backtrack. <laughs> we got to backtrack. No, well, like, I, like, I'm sorry. I'm full of useless listen, knowledge, dude. I, I really want people to watch you guys' new podcast. I really do. So, and you're going to tell the whole life story. Uh, so let's save the content for you guys. That's cool. <laughs> I don't care, dude. I just like busting your balls because you're always like, so yeah, like, to wrap, let's this, be wrap honest. this up. Let's, it's okay, like, let's, let's be honest, Scott. You're going to be back on here again. Matt's going to probably drag you on and. He gets if mad Matt every really time wants to do it, I already, I, I already told you that I would, I, I'd be, uh, I'd do okay. But it has to be focused on him, you know. I then mean, maybe we ask him the questions. How about that? D- that's fine. Or I'll just chime in when there's a need, you know, or whatever. I mean, he's a great kid, so I think Scott's he's got He's fed up he's with the channel. Gotta, he's like, fuck your what? channel. He's like, fuck your <laughs> channel. I don't want to be here no more. Uh, yeah, I can, just, I can, I can talk forever, but I have to bounce. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's do a uh, movie podcast soon, and I'm uh, down. Yeah, you know, we'll uh, yeah we'll do more yeah. of these. These are fun for sure. Regard- regardless of what we Scott and I are doing, uh, these are fun to do with you. So yeah, they're I'm always sure. fun, dude. Always, <laughs> always a fun time. But that I'm sorry for the viewers that are tired of seeing my <laughs> ugly face on his podcast, but you know he I try to get him to not put me on anymore, but he always does. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> shut up, honks again. <laughs> Fucking beaner. Uh, Whoa, bro. <laughs> damn, damn. I wasn't going to go PC, bro. Keep it PC. Whoa, really? <laughs> Let's be real. He's only being PC because he's he's on a podcast right now, Anthony. This yeah, guy's worse than I am. Yeah, in private, bitch. I don't do that shit in public. <laughs> I don't, don't got to tell you. You already know. Yeah. So, <sighs> oh, um, gosh. Anyway. Go, these guys coming out the podcast really soon. You guys got a name for it, by the way? Uh, Behind the Mask. Behind the Mask podcast uh, coming to your earballs really soon. Um, Brought to you by Mad JD Productions oh, and Lee House, Dynamics. And Madhouse <laughs> and Mad House. Podcast Network. And it's yeah. Jay, Jay Lee Entertainment, you fucking dumbass. Slider Dynamics also, that's the thing. So go check that out as well. <laughs> yeah. He, so it's in conjunction he, with he, each he, other. He, right there. He, he. Yeah. Slider Dynamics, man. I got a sticker on my bumper, so. That's right. I got stickers right here. There, there. Right there. Yeah, I, I sent them to him, and he still hasn't even posted them anywhere. What a I, I know. <laughs> taking up space is what they're doing. All right, guys. All thank right. you, Anthony, for having us on. Yes, yes sir. We'll, uh, we'll chat again soon. Definitely. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, bell notification, be where every time I put up a new video, follow us on whatever you're listening to, and we'll see you guys next time for another podcast. Adios, guys. You're moving into a Madhouse Podcasting Network.